Board Gamers and welcome back to Not Board Gaming. I'm your host, I'm Mark. Now in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a game, a pure solo game, which has already been released, already had a successful Kickstarter campaign, but it's back on Kickstarter with an expansion. And that game is the wonderfully titled Relics of Raja Vihara, designed by Joe Slack and published by Crazy Like a Box. Now, as I say, this is a pure solo game. It is currently on Kickstarter. The new uh, campaign started on the 7th of September, so check it out in the link below. But what is Relics of Raji Vihara? We all know that your mobile phone is the ultimate solo gaming <laughs> console, if you like. More people probably play games solo on their mobile phones than any other way, you know, be that Candy Crush or many of the other iterations of games are out there. What Joe Slack from Crazy Like a Box has done is taken the concept of a mobile phone game and created a pure solo board game out of it. And it is quite wonderful to tell you the truth. So what is Relics of Raji Vihar? Well, first of all, it is, as I say, it replicates a mobile phone type puzzle game. And you can see from this really, really brief rule book, it's a game that can be taught in all of about 10 seconds. And the background behind it is you are an adventure thrill seeker. Your name is Virginia Rivers. And there we go. There's Virginia there. Fantastic. We've got a female led adventure in here. And you just discovered the ancient palace of Rajivihara, which has been known for its legendary treasures. Of course, if Virginia finds them, she wants to take them to a museum where they'll be cared for, not thinking of keeping any for herself. <laughs> but she isn't the only person looking for the treasures. Her nemesis, the dastardly Professor Montalo, has beaten her there. Only he wants more than treasures. He wants to summon the spirits of Rajivihara and take over the world. I'll say right off the bat that this is a review copy provided to me by Joe himself. Um, uh, but of course, it's a review copy, not a preview copy. So my thoughts will be kind of unexpurgated in that way. And if you look at what you get in the box of Relics of Raji Vihara, as you can see, there are a number of packs here, including a bonus pack that you can get. And they get progressively more difficult. I think there are 50 levels in total with each of the five boxes containing 10 levels, which progressively get more and more. They add different cubes in there and different mechanisms in there, etc. So they start off relatively straightforward. And then as you go through the game, you're going to hit more and more difficult puzzles. And even by the end of kind of the first pack, uh, you'll find that, the, you know, you'll have to attempt some of the puzzles two or three times when you're going to pack number two. It adds different boxes, and it also adds, of course, the uh, 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 Professor Montalo as well, who's also trying to get these treasures from you, and that progresses throughout the entirety of the 50 level campaign. Now, the new Kickstarter adds more and more into that as well. And you're gonna play through each one of these in a progressive basis, on one by one basis, and turning new, each new kind of uh, uh, level that you come for. And as you can see, there are the 10 cards for level one, and then attempting the puzzles therein. It's actually a really nice box that you get here and everything is sealed away. So when you crack the seal on one of the new cases, on one of the new levels, shall I say, so there we go, in level two, and you can hear that's got some boxes in there and let's just do level three. Oh, even more cubes in there as well, which I'm not going to reveal to you. I'm only going to talk about level one and the first level of level one here because I really don't want to spoil the puzzle for you. By creating a solo only game, what Joe has done here, is create something that you can actually get out start playing within just a couple of seconds of opening the box. And if you want to play for five minutes or 10 minutes or even an hour, then there's more than enough content in here to keep you going and keep you coming back. And each level can be played fairly quickly if you unravel the puzzle. Of course, the puzzle gets progressively harder. So each level as you get through the game is going to take you more and more attempts to try and do it. But what is, how do you play Relics of Raji Vihara? I think before I show you that, I am going to say that I'm going to show you one level and one level only. And it is the very first level. What I do not want to do is spoil the puzzle for anybody. So um, I'm going to show you the first level, how it plays. It's a fairly straightforward puzzle, but you'll get the mechanisms there. But trust me, as you play through all the kind of the various boxes that come with it and the various levels up to the level 50, the puzzles get more and more dastardly.
So if you watch my videos before, you know that I can go on long and long and long about games. But the beauty about Relics of Rajivihara is it's very easy to explain how it works. It's very easy to show you how it plays and you can tell it to anybody in about 10 seconds flat. Now, when you get the box itself, you'll see that there are these, as I showed you before, these number of tuck boxes in here and a special level X as well. And inside each of these tuck boxes is going to be a number of cubes or blocks. And you can see these blocks here. And these are just, these are looking like crates at the moment. Here we go. Uh, and you're also going to get some cards as well. And there may be other things inside there. And each each level that you have has 10 different phases in there or 10 different stages in there. And you're going to work through each stage. Now, what this is really, really good because they show you how each stage works. So if you look at this particular card, it tells you where each of the boxes go and how many boxes stack. So here we have three boxes. Here we have two boxes, single box, etc and you put them out on the board that comes with it. And it's this nice kind of double layered board, which has got ridges around the end. It tells you where Virginia is going to start as well. So she's going to start there. And also what the goal is. And the goal is generally to get the, uh, to get the gem that's in there. So you're going to work this. There's no real turns here. What your character can do is move along any of these paths, basically orthogonally. So you can't move diagonally and then solve the puzzle. When they get to a cube, they can move up one level or they can move down one level. So for example, they couldn't move up on these blocks here because there's two of them there. So they would have to find a way to move a block to there to move up there. Similarly, they couldn't move down from that block because you need uh, to have a block there because you can only move up or down one level. They can also push cubes as well. They cannot pull cubes. So for example, they could push this cube up to there and you'd move your little figure and they would push that cube up to there what they can't do is pull cubes so if they've done that they couldn't then pull this cube away from this wall that's not allowed you can only push cubes in the direction of which you are facing and the puzzle is of course to try to find a way to get to the jewel and if we look here we have uh, two we have a jewel on top of three boxes here are three crates and then we have two crates next to it we have a single crate at the back but we can't get to there because you can only move to the edges of the map and we have these double crates here so the aim here is to try and get virginia to get to where that cube is now <laughs> it's really really straightforward so what virginia is going to do we'll take virginia here and we're going to move her to there so suddenly she's right up against the edge then we're going to move to this particular cube and she's going to push that cube to there. So she's getting closer now to getting this particular jewel. What she's going to do now is she's going to move up her one level. There we go. And that's because she can move one level up. And we are now at the next cube. And she's going to push that cube to that position there. Oh, you suddenly see the puzzle is now coming together. Virginia is then going to move one level up there. One level up there. And look at that. She's got the very first cube on the very first level. And that's really kind of satisfying when you work out the puzzle. I've seen the first level, it's very it's easy to work out, but when you work out the puzzle and what you can do, then it becomes a really satisfying conclusion. So you've got that, that there. However, let's say for example, she was wanting to move uh, these cubes here and she moved up to this particular cube here. What she would do is she would push one of those cubes there bang, that would move there, and that one would drop down onto the level below it. And this is a way that you can then kind of unearth the cubes and use the cubes to your advantage. You may have a stack of cubes that you want to start moving. So for example, on this particular level, here, uh, with a jewel up there, excuse me, that there and that there, if we just reset the level to where it was, what Virginia could have done, started here, moved around here, and pushed one of these cubes here. That would push the bottom cube there and drop that one down into there. Then she could, if she wanted to, uh, which she wouldn't want to do, move down here and then move that cube to that particular area. Doesn't really get her anything at this stage. Um, but I suppose uh, what she could have done then is she could have moved here, move that cube out of the way, move that cube to there, move this here, round there, 
and then jumped up on there and pushed that cube all the way. And that's the thing, is sometimes there are more than one way to solve the actual puzzle, but you can see she can now have the position to actually get up there and get the jewel. It's a blisteringly simple way of playing a game, and there's quite a lot of fun in kind of moving the cubes around and working out the puzzle and realizing, ah, oh, I can't do that particular action because it means moving up two cubes or dropping down more than one cube, or maybe I have to push the cubes from underneath, or the crates from underneath, so I can then move the crate that I've pushed into a position where I can solve the puzzle. So it becomes this really nice little puzzle where you're moving stuff around constantly to, to try to get the best way to solve the puzzle. As I say, in many cases, there's more than one way to solve the puzzle. As I've already mentioned, there are in each box there are 10 cards and each has its own unique level and its own unique puzzle to solve in there. When you solve it, you move on to the next one and it will get progressively harder. And the issue with reviewing a game like Relics of Raji, Raji Vihara is that each level is a one-hit puzzle. Once it's solved, that's it, the level is solved. So I, I don't really want to show you any more levels. Yes, there are 50 levels. I, I could have shown you a, a harder one on here, but I thought that the first level is one that most people are going to solve. Once you resolve that puzzle, that's it. You probably won't go back and play the puzzle. That is both a blessing and a bit of a curse when it comes to relics of Rajavihara. As I mentioned earlier, in a stroke of genius, what Joe has done is taken the concept of a mobile phone game, a single player, the ultimate single player console, if you like, a mobile phone, and made it into a board game. And we've seen, obviously, board games go the other way. We've seen some board games become apps and video games, etc. And we have seen some big video games become board games, things like Resident Evil 3 and Resident Evil 2. Uh, there are the odd app that becomes a board game, such as Kingdom Rush, but Joe's taken something that didn't exist in that uh, mobile phone world and created a board game which would drop right into a mobile phone game. And I think it's a stroke of genius because we often worry about you know, people spending too much time on their devices. And as board gamers, we play board games sometimes to get away from the fact that we don't want to be stuck on our devices. But the progressive nature of some of these games that you get and some of these apps that you get on your mobile phones are, is fantastic. You know, it's a great way to kind of spend 10, 15 minutes on a train journey playing a game of Candy Crush or whatever it is. What this does is gives you that luxury bit in your own house without anything switched on. And because of how easy and accessible it is, it means that we can then use these very kind of games for our children as well. So if you want to get your children off their apps, then Relics of Rajavihara is absolutely fantastic for that. It creates a great 10 or 15 minute experience, or you can string a number of levels together, and it gets that really kind of thinky part of the brain working. You have a spatial puzzle in 3D that you're trying to work out. And that's a really, really good tool, not just for ourselves in a way to switch off from our electronic devices, but as a teaching medium as well for our children just to understand how things work on a 3D basis. So there's lots going for relics of Rajiv Vihara. However, on the flip side of that, you know, I have mentioned the fact that each scenario is a one-hit scenario. It's a one-and-done scenario, or, 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 or level if you want to call it, uh, each card that you get. And that is really true. You see, with a mobile phone game like Candy Crush or, or whatever, you're going to play a level. And when you complete that level, you're going to move on to the next level. And that's and you're never going to go back and play that level again. And that's exactly the same with Relics of Raja Vihara. If anything, it's a victim of its own success in the fact that replayability is limited. You're going to hit all your scenarios, your 50 scenarios that you've got here, or your 50 levels that you've got here. And then that's it. You're done. You're not really going to want to go back and revisit them. Now, obviously, there is a, an expansion on Kickstarter at the moment. So Joe is constantly breathing more life into this. But... This is where it kind of diverges a little bit from a mobile phone game. You see, on a mobile phone, um, the, the game can constantly be updated. New levels can constantly be added. It's a physical board game. There has to be physical components for this. So with that in mind, that means that then your replayability is limited by the very number of uh, levels that you get in the box itself. So yeah, that is the replayability isn't really there for it. But if you go into the game understanding that that is an issue, uh, that you know, and you don't mind it so much, then then you're going to have a pretty decent time doing this. Because you know, the great thing about it is, as I say, if you think that. Um, 
uh, you can lay this out in kind of 10 or 15 seconds and play uh, a few levels on this for uh, your 10, 15, 20 minutes, then you're gonna have an utterly fantastic time. The other thing as well is the movement of the pawns on here. So here we have Virginia and we also have the Nemesis as well. Now I get why this happens. It has to, you move them, you move them around the board to signify where they are and then you move the, uh, the blocks accordingly, or the crates accordingly, etc. It just feels a little bit fiddly and uh, maybe a little bit redundant. The more levels I played, I actually didn't end up using uh, uh, the Virginia pawn in any way, shape or form, or the Virginia meeple, is I just kind of work the puzzle out and move the blocks and see what would happen. Um, because moving this around just becomes a little bit fiddly, and certainly if you've got big fat fingers like me, uh, kind of moving these blocks around and, and, uh, and stopping them toppling on top of each other becomes a little bit of an issue while you're trying to move this pawn. I get why it's there. It's replicating the fact that on mobile phone you'd be swiping the screen and your little character would be moving all over the place. So it has to be there as a point of reference. And maybe the younger players will actually like moving the pawn around. But for me, after a while, as I say, I ended up not doing that and solving the puzzles by just moving the blocks around myself and, and creating my own kind of uh, rule sets to do that And as long as they were in line with the rules that you get from here. So yeah, it becomes a little bit of a victim of its own success in the fact that you have this really accessible, quick to play, challenging, uh, progressively challenging puzzle, but by re replicating exactly what you get on a mobile phone is it also falls into the trappings of moving some of that into the physical world and namely that is moving these little pawns around and also the fact that it is a one, one hit and done scenario basis, you will not go back to these scenarios. However, it's pure solo. It is 10 or 15 minutes at a time that you're gonna play this for. And when you completed it, you'll get a lot of joy by passing this on to other people who can then play it and have that fun and uh, and solve those puzzles. Maybe pass it on to a school or a youth center, etc., or a library, because it is a nice tactile game to play. Despite its fiddliness with these pawns, it's still a nice feeling when you get there and you crack the puzzle. Final thoughts then on Relics of Rajavihara in what will possibly be one of my shortest ever reviews and that's because the only way I could tell you more about the game is to spoil all of the levels that you're going to get in there and I'm not willing to do that because there's a lot of fun to be having this. It is a, as I mentioned a number of times, a puzzle that succeeds in the fact that it's really simple to learn how to play the game. But the progressive nature of those puzzles get more and more, uh, more and more harder as you play more of the game, and it becomes a nice challenge. And you know, you can spend sometimes on some of the later levels, you're going to spend a lot of time getting it wrong, resetting the board, trying again, etc. Yes, it has its flaws. The fact it is one one uh, one hit and done scenario basis. That's okay if you go into it knowing that. And yes, it can be slightly fiddly with these pawns and these meeples that you're moving around it may feel a little bit redundant but you'll know that going in the sheer amount of various levels that you get in this base game alone is staggering 50 levels and you're going to breeze through the first 10 relatively quickly you get onto level two where new mechanisms start to get introduced new blocks start to get introduced things get harder same with three four and five and by the time you're on the fifth level which is this one here which again has got some blocks in there let me see what blocks are in here quick sneak peek oh look they've got some kind of water symbol on there you're going to get even more dastardly and everything starts stacking up and using all the blocks from the previous levels as well and the puzzles get harder and harder and harder I really appreciate what Joe has done with this. I think he has created something that is yeah, kind of unique-ish in the market and certainly in a way of taking people away from their mobile phones and providing that solo gamer, pure solo gamer experience in a physical format is really, really good. As I mentioned, it is a victim of its own success, so your enjoyment on this, will, part of it will come out of how much replayability you think you're gonna get out of this. As I say, the joy for me is that when I finish this, I will then pass that on to somebody else and let them have the joy for it, and hopefully it will be like having a good book. You know, they, never, they say, never lend a book, always give a book, and I think that's the same with Relics of Rajavihara. I'd like to, once I finished with it, <laughs> 
move that enjoyment out to other people. So yeah, it's a really neat little puzzle game. It's not a world beating game by any chance, uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but in terms of achieving what it set out to achieve, providing a pure solo experience that takes you away from your screens, it 100% achieves that. It's a neat, nice, family weight, puzzle game that you will get a lot of enjoyment out of and if you've got kids your kids will get a lot of enjoyment out of this so make sure you check out the link for the kickstarter which is now live down below there and you will see you can buy even more stuff there for relics of rajavihara so thank you very much for joining me on this review of relics of rajavihara designed by joe slack and published by crazy like a box the kink uh, the kickstarter is live check the link below my name's Mark, this is not board gaming. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, check out our other videos, and one final thought. If you can't find anybody else to play with, there's nothing wrong with playing with yourselves. Until next time, bye-bye.